everybody welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. I'm going to try this video again. Uh, I tried it two nights ago and realized apparently I sat here for about an hour talking to the computer and it wasn't recording. Not my proudest. So this video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is address a comment that uh, was made on uh, the most recent video the uh, the Pioneer Farmlight video. Sorry, it's been a long week, folks. It really has. Um, but one of the comments that was made on there uh, basically said, hey, it would have been nice if you could have uh, told us what you paid for that. That way we can see you know, what, what, what prices are at. And I'll go ahead and I'll read this. Uh, I wish you would include the price of acquisition of your collector saws to give us all an idea of what an expert collector sees, where the value is at this point in time. Since you are currently buying saws for your collection, you have a finger on current prices. As videos age, we can also see where the trends are going. If you did videos on this subject with different brands, all that would be valuable to new collectors. Thanks. Well, first off, thanks for the... Uh, vote of confidence there, expert collector, that's a high bar to live up to, and I'm not sure that I do, uh, but I do buy saws, so point taken, let's, uh, let's do it. Uh, I buy, for starters, I, I've talked about this before, I buy most of my saws on eBay. Uh, around my area, Southern Oregon, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, that's a freaking joke, absolute joke. Uh, I see stuff, I look, and I can count on one hand with a whole lot of fingers left over as to how many times I've actually bought that way. Uh, there's no deals. Everybody thinks their stuff around here is gold-plated, platinum, I don't know, something. Yahoos, that's what I call them, is Yahoos. Somebody, technical definition is somebody who uh, thinks very highly of their stuff, and I don't. It makes them a Yahoo. I just made that up, it's okay. Uh, so I do a lot of eBay, and you got to filter out the the stuff on eBay as well. But I've done really, really well, to be fair, uh, really well. Uh, I can also count on one hand with fingers left over how many times I've gotten the uh, crummy end of the stick on eBay. So, uh, with that in mind, that's how I approach this. I went back three years on eBay, which is what they show in the purchase history, and just made a little list here. And I figured I'd go through it. I've got pictures of all of these, and I'm going to attempt to put them into the video, so it'll be kind of a, a voiceover uh, in a lot of cases here. So we'll just go at it. Uh, that Pioneer Farm Light uh, is one of the saws I've added to my collection, the most recent. The purchase price on that was $152.50, and then with shipping it came to $195.38. Not bad. Uh, it's a 58cc saw, was in really good shape. Uh, I did have to replace some components in the chain brake. Uh, that's not a lot of fun, by the way. Uh, getting all those components in there and in place, whew, man, I said some bad words twice, three times, I don't know. Uh, didn't have a whole lot else. Uh, that's why I felt I got a really good deal on that at just under 200 bucks. Uh, the only other thing I had to replace was the chain because the chain that was on there had been filed incorrectly and by the time it got fixed it it was a chipper chain anyway it wasn't worth my time to fix it there wouldn't have been much teeth left so replace the chain but the sprocket was good starter air filter all that other stuff was good you guys saw it you know fuel line uh, carb kit so all in eh, 250 to have a running saw I could go cut firewood with that right now so Pretty good deal, I I think. So let me get into my files here. And what I'm gonna do is bring up my pictures as I talk about these. And this will also kind of help me uh, stay in order. So the next one on the list for 2013 is the Promac 850. Now I, there are videos of that one and I wanna see if I just screwed up. No, I didn't. It's still recording. God, I don't know what happened the other night. If I'm really that much of a dipstick, hate to think so. 
Um, at eight fifty, uh, purchase price was three fifty five, and with shipping, three eighty three. And I immediately, the same night that I won that auction, spent another sixty five bucks for the proper air filter cover and air filter because I knew those weren't with it. It came with a, a eight hundred Promac eight hundred style domed fil uh, filter cover. I wanted this to be right. So I obviously also had to add the bar and chain. <clears throat> that was a, a batch that I had bought years ago of those bars. You'll see more of those as we go through. Uh, so pretty clean all in all for an older saw. There's some paint wear. This has been used. You can see some tape on the handle. But the chain brake isn't all jacked up. The decomp system isn't all jacked up. Everything is right. It's, it's the way it should be. And I know a lot of guys back in the day ripped all the chain brake crap off of these and didn't want anything to do with them. I, I want the saws in my collection to be complete as they should be. So, pretty sure I added that bucking spike there as well. Uh, the oil tank cover and the, the front of the fuel tank all the, aren't all torn up. So I'd say this did do a lot of falling or, you know, Larger bucking, not in the brush and all that junk. Decals on the f air filter cover, good. Yeah, it's a good saw. Uh, I, I've done a lot of cutting with that this year, and I, I will say, even though I'm not a Mac guy, that is a good saw. I enjoy running it. <clears throat> so all in, I mean, I was easily, by the time you count for the price of the bar and all that, I was well north of 500. It's an 82cc saw. With the way Buckins channel has driven the McCulloch prices up uh, on these these saws especially, okay. I, you know, I don't feel great about it, but I feel okay about it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the next one, and I, here we go. Homelight VI-123. Bid price was one fifty three forty nine. By the time it was shipped, two twenty thirty six. So, almost two hundred and twenty one bucks. It uh, obviously came from somewhere on the other side of the country. It just happens. You know, not everybody can be close to Oregon when they're selling their saw. Although it'd be so much more convenient for me. Very clean. Again, uh, a lot of the. The paint is still in place. The, the factory uh, decals or markings on this starter side look really good. The throttle handle, <clears throat> those two halves I did replace because I had them on hand in my new old stock parts. And they were worn pretty badly. So I thought, hey, I'm going to slap those on. The uh, AV mounts were in good shape. The Terry tag is still there, which made me quite happy. Excuse me, blasted a coat of uh, high heat paint on the muffler. I do that quite a bit where well, they've gotten rusty. I'm using basically barbecue paint and it, it really, it turns out nice. It bakes on good. I like it. Uh, the drive case cover had some damage, so I picked up a new old stock one and then a decal kit. So that is, you know, that decal is not an original marking, but if I hadn't told you guys, I don't think you'd have known. So pretty cool. Obviously the bar I added, uh, I don't even know where I got it, whatever, but it's got a new bar and a new full chisel, full comp chain. Bottom, you know, isn't all dinged up. And there's a nice close up of that uh, Terry tag. So good saw, you know, with all the, the bar and whatever work I put into it, we were probably getting close to 300 bucks. So again, a 54 or 58 CC saw. I feel just fine about that. You don't see a lot of VI 123s. I know they sold them. I, you know, they did. But right now, in terms of collecting, I personally don't see that many of them. So again, that was in 2023. That, those three saws, believe it or not, are the only three I've added to my collection in 2023. Kind of odd, for me anyway. So now we're going to move into... 2022 so I'm working backwards newest to oldest that's how we're doing this so we got a Pioneer P38 good looking saw you can see that there is some drag marks scratch marks whatever you want to call it on that uh, 
starter there, but oddly enough, the P38 decal is in pretty good shape, and I didn't add that. I didn't buy a, a decal kit for this. These are the ones that were on it, so I don't know. And they're, you know, they're, they're somewhere. It's been used, but it hasn't been used that much. The right hand guard, you can see a chunk out of the corner there. That's very, very common on these. But the muffler shield is intact. The chain brake is largely intact. There's that one little chip in the upper part there. I don't know what happened. Don't know, don't care. It is what it is. It works. The front of the saw has a little bit of brush rash, but not a lot. The bar came with it. I added a new chain. I can see that clearly from here. So that was a little bit of an expense. I guess I forgot to tell you that was $200 bid price, $279.95 shipped. And what did I have to add to this? I might have had to do some chain brake repairs on this. I honestly don't remember. But again, this is also a 58cc saw. So, you know, even. Even coming in in the mid 300s, which is where I think this one landed with all the parts and stuff, I feel feel pretty good about that. Next one on the list doesn't stray far from the family. Pioneer P39. This one was 249 for the bid price and was shipping 268.77. So right off the bat, you can see I added a bar and chain. So again, those I want to say the bar and chain together at that size is somewhere in the $80 to $90 range. So it's up there a ways. Uh, there's some fade on the plastic of the starter there, but that is the original decal. And somebody painted the air filter cover blue. I don't know why. It was a odd choice. I would replace that if and when I find a proper Pioneer Partner era filter cover to go on there. That's an earlier style, like a, a P41 style or something like that. Uh, not a big deal, but a thing. Uh, the right hand guard is a little more robust on this saw, so it's not damaged. The, chain, the muffler guard is in good shape. Uh, the chain brake does work. Uh, might have had to replace the flag on this one, the chain brake flag. I honestly cannot remember. A little bit of rash on the front of the oil, uh, fuel tank there. Uh, I'm certain I had to add bucking spikes. I'd say two-thirds of the saws I buy, I add bucking spikes. That's just a thing. So, yep, pretty clean, all in all. Definitely was bulking up at this time period. There were pioneers for sale, and I wanted this style. So, I got some of them. Next one on the list, we're going back to some old Yella, a Mac 710 automatic. This is one of the later ones. I, I think this is one of the last years that it was produced, I believe. Uh, pretty clean, all in all. This is a, a, a good looking saw. Uh, not a lot of paint wear, all things considered. Uh, it does have a proper uh, decompression valve in it. I had to add that. Or replace it. I was cutting with this saw up on the firewood hill and all of a sudden something didn't sound quite right. Damn thing had rattled out and I'll be damned if I could find it in the leaves and the dander and crap up there. Uh, it was not a cheap little piece. It does have a proper muffler. It is not burnt out. The chain brake is complete and functional and I believe it's original to this saw. It's the right style. I did have to add the bucking spike to this. This is another one of my Carlton bars with a new chain. Uh, I think in this pick I had filed it at least once. Uh, but yeah, still a pretty new full chisel, full comp chain. Uh, not a bunch of brush rash on the, the tanks there. Pretty clean paint, all things considered. Decals are in pretty damn good shape, all things considered. So yeah, good saw. 202.50 was the uh, purchase price, two twenty fifty shipped to my door. So $18 to ship a powerhead. There had to be somebody here in Oregon. Uh, there's a seller up in Portland. I'm, I'm almost certain that's where this came from. So again, with uh, 
with the bucking inflation factor that uh, you can throw on the max saws, poo, uh, I was totally happy with that. All right, next on the list, we're back to the the light green saws, a Pioneer P41. And this was a just a screaming deal, one thirty five. 05 bid price 17505 shipped to my door and that included I'm almost certain that included the bar and chain because that doesn't look like something I had on the shelf and that looks like a pioneer style bar so the decals are in good shape the paint is in excellent shape some of the paint loss on the starter grill was actually a result of me cleaning it up uh, that's one of the weak spots for paint adhesion I should have dropped some of that high heat paint on this muffler, uh, but I think I was eager to get some pictures done or something. I don't know. A little bit of wear on the, the full wrap handle rubber, but not a big deal. <clears throat> that chain is over half worn, but because it's a full chisel skip, there's still plenty of life left in it. Uh, I may or may not have added the bucking spike. Not a lot of rash on the front of the tanks pretty good overall the air filter covers in good shape the right hand guards not broken out it's a p41 so I'm pretty stoked to have that one okay next on the list we're gonna get to something a little bit different more of what you would expect from me it's a home light DM 20 so that's an XL 12 saw that has a few modifications so it can be a cutoff saw and this is new old stock it's never run but it was damaged uh, there's a seller that I think had 12 or 14 saws that he bought various types of units uh, from an old home light dealer but either the roof had leaked and these things were in an area where they could accumulate moisture or there was a, enough standing water whatever it is it did cause damage this one I don't remember if I had to do any crankcase replacement or anything like that uh, but it's really clean the the nicks in the paint are just from being moved around over the years uh, I had to replace the handle bracket for the, the main handle that was broken in shipping I think uh, but I was able to do that and then the non new old stock piece is clearly that that chain or uh, blade assembly uh, I just found the cleanest one I could to put on there because it didn't come with one and for display purposes I wanted it to have one. It's a 1981 model. Uh, it's never been fired. To this day I did not fire it. I cleaned it up to where I could but I didn't. So $160 with shipping. That's what it got took to get to my door. So pretty good deal. I mean that blade assembly was oh, probably 50 or 60 bucks all in uh, but still great price for a, a new unit like that uh, even with the bit of damage that it had next one is from the same seller and it's an XL12 a 1981 model so this would have been one of the last years that the XL12 was produced and sold in the United States uh, I actually think this is the one that may have had uh, the crankcase damage and I may have had to replace the crankcase <laughs> Because you can see in the, the one picture here, I'd forgotten to hook that damn oil line back up. And I'm wondering if I ever did. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It stands out like a sore thumb right now. Yet somehow I missed it uh, at that point. So it's again paint wear from sitting around, moving around. But this saw has never run to this day. I didn't even put a fuel line back in it. And I don't know, I don't know what the hell was wrong with me at that point. Yeah, is what it is. You can see that little piece of cardboard sticking out. That is the original separation, uh, the way it was shipped. That's the original piece of cardboard from 1981. And in the uh, picture, you can, actually you can't. The inspection sticker is gone. That's funny. Normally there would be an inspected by sticker on the, the hand guard, but it's not there. A little bit of wear on the bottom, just from being moved around. That's it. It is a 1981, never been fired. So, $250 shipped to my door, plus whatever parts I put into it. So, still not bad for uh, basically a, a new old stock unit. 
All right, next one on the list is more of the fun homey Super Home Light Super XP 1130. Yeah, this is cool stuff. Gear drive. 355 got it to my door or was the bid price 41182 was the overall price with shipping and that included that bar. So again, this was a local West Coast, we'll say, West Coast seller. To get all that here, that's an amazing price as far as I'm concerned. That's a 100cc saw, gear drive saw right there with, if I remember correctly, that is half pitch chain that's on there. You can't go wrong. I mean, you could probably sell the damn bar and chain for that price at this point. So there's definitely heavy paint wear. Trying to identify it by its, uh, you know, starter would be impossible. One downside, the serial tag is missing from that uh, that starter housing there, which sucks. But if I avoided desirable saws just because of that, I, models like this I wouldn't have. So grin and bear it. Again, there's some paint wear. I had to add that muffler cover. That was not on the saw when I got it, so that was an extra price, but I know I got that at a good price on eBay. The labeling on this side, on the, the clutch side, are definitely in better shape. No problems with that full wrap handlebar. That's the low profile one, so there's not a, not a huge amount of room in there for your hands, but there's enough. Got the proper bucking spike on it. Uh, yeah, just a pretty pretty clean saw all things considered just a, a really good looking saw a good runner uh, throttle handle has been replaced at some point but it wasn't by me it was you know one of the previous owners so who knows how long ago it was I don't really care I'm happy to have that thing in my collection especially at that price so the next saw apparently I didn't take pictures of and I don't know why next time I have it down I will but it's an Echo CS8000. That was in the 82cc uh, challenge, uh, and I bought it explicitly for that purpose. It's a lot newer than most everything else in, in my uh, collection, almost everything else. But it would be the late 80s, early 90s, being the gray model. And that was $416. Bid price, $442.67, shipped to my door. And based on what I see them selling for on eBay right now, I think that was a good deal. Uh, fairly low hour saw. I didn't do much to it. I don't even know if I had to put hoses in the carb kit and I think it was a runner as it came to me. So bar and chain, basically it. And that's the one that uh, took the brunt of my old three quarter ton diesel. Yeah, I was using it up there and I set it down and went to move my truck and like a complete dumbass left front right over the top of it. Now I was lucky. I broke the chain brake bent the handlebar and broke the starter but the starter would it broke two of the four mounts off handlebar was mushed all to hell so when i did the 82 cc challenge it did that with a mushed handlebar broken chain brake and that broken starter that was being held on by two screws and it's so yeah i've fixed all that junk now but it doesn't pay to run over your saws don't do it Next one on the list, Home Light C51G. Okay, so Home Light had this kit you could add, a gear drive kit you could add to these C series saws, and they really pushed it in the, the C51, C71, C91 with, you know, you've got the convertible drive label on there. So I bought the saw as just a regular direct drive saw. Another one of my, my bars and chains I had on hand. Uh, clean paint, good labeling, has the serial tag there. I mean, all the things that I like to see. And because of that, I had a new old stock gear drive unit that I pulled down and said, it's going on this saw. So that's a 404 setup. Uh, did keep the factory stack style muffler on there just because. If you want to make your ears bleed, that's one way to do it. Uh, just a really, really clean saw that looks great with that gear drive unit on it. I really should need to take it up there and do some cutting just to get a video. This one, the saw itself was $199.80. Shipped to my door, $231.80, so not bad at all. Uh, at 
at the time that I got that gear drive unit, I probably paid around $300 for it. So let's say 600 all in. That's pretty high for a 77cc saw, but not with that gear drive kit. That's pretty sought after in the collector's market. So uh, I don't know. I'm pretty stoked with it. I'm just looking at it. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I like it. Next one on the list, another home light, an XL114. So this saw is in average condition. Uh, you can read the, the labeling. Uh, and read on the starter there where it says Pulsar Ignition. That's what's unique about a 114. It's a, an early style electronic ignition. Uh, it still has a condenser, but it doesn't have points. It has some sort of a pickup module system that replaces the points. So the parts aren't super easy to find for those ignition systems. Uh, I was thankful that this one works and works well. It has the proper downdraft muffler on it. Uh, that drive case cover may not have come on this saw. I may have had to, to buy one that had close, because the paint patina you can see isn't quite right. So I think that's what I had to do. I had to buy one that almost matched. Uh, you can see the blue paint sticking through on the fuel tank. That's from Home Light's old stock being depleted. When they changed to the red color, they repainted some of their parts right over the blue. That's why you get that. But uh, yeah, good looking saw. It does have a serial tag. So 148.50 was the bid, 177.67 to my door. And assuming I added the cover and the bar and chain, you know, throw another 50, 60 bucks on it. So. Yeah, not bad. Again, 58 cc saw. Uh, yeah, it was an odd enough one. XL 114. You do not see that every day, so I was super happy to to add it to the collection. Same thing on the next one, and this is one of the rare saws where I uh, did a direct transaction, uh, actually through my website. Uh, contact a gentleman contacted me and had a Home Light Super VI 200. Uh, that he was getting rid of. And this one was in Canada. These, this is a, a Canadian built saw, Terry built saw. Uh, you can see the French for solid state printed on the starter cover down there. Pretty good shape overall. Uh, I, I didn't have to do a whole lot to this saw, like maybe not much. Did have one of the viewers on the channel uh, contact me when he, he saw the pictures of the, the saw and he said hey you got the wrong air filter cover on there and I hadn't noticed it but he's right you can see the fit isn't quite right he sent me the right one but the saw is so buried in the attic I haven't had been able to get to it to put the right cover on it and take another picture so uh, I'll get there uh, has the uh, Terry uh, international style muffler that was only used on the international saws. That was not used here in the States. So nice to see that intact. Uh, I think I added that bucking spike. I know I added that bar and chain because it was something I had on hand and it was just super appropriate for this saw. I also added the ha proper handguard kit on there. That is what would have come on here. I had one rat hole away that I held on to for a rainy day just because this saw was the just because. The fuel tank probably has more paint wear than any other part of the saw, so I'm going to say it spent most of its life being run in smaller wood and brush without, uh, without a bucking spike on it. There's a picture of that uh, Terry tag, 1979 saw, so it and I are roughly the same age. So, again, you do not see this variant, especially the Super uh, VI200, all that often, so I was more than happy to add that to my collection. All right, so that was, if we're keeping count, that was 10 saws in 2022. And now we'll move to 2021. And we're going to go back to some yellow. We have a Pro Mac 4300. So this is basically, a, it is a Pro Mac 700. This is just the last marketing version they had of it. Before it was discontinued, uh, yeah. Not a whole lot to say. It's a, a clean saw, didn't have a bar and chain. This was a little spendy. Here's some bucking inflation for you. Uh, 460 was the bid, 
and 514.95 to get it to my door without a bar and chain. Obviously, I bought that Archer set up to put on there, so you probably add another 80 bucks to the, the price just right off the top. Uh, but it is fairly clean. There's a little bit of damage on the handle there, and it looks like the uh, the safety trigger spring is blown out on it. And to be honest, I didn't care enough to, to try and tear that throttle apart. Those aren't fun. But the, the air filter cover decal that says what it is is in really good shape. But the rest of it, it looks like a Pro Max 700. It's just they decided to change it to a 4300 because it's 4.3 cubic inches. Yeah, whatever. Marketing ploy. It's leaked a little fuel over its day. You can see that uh, where the tank half meets there. I know I had to put a, a gasket in there, and there's not much you can do with that paint when it starts to bubble like that. It is what it is. Just try not to touch it. Try not to disturb it. So, clean saw, odd variant. That's why I spent what I did on it uh, to add it to the collection. So, definitely, I wouldn't call that a good deal. I would call it an average deal for the price of these saws right now, this style. All right, next up, we have more yellow, a McCulloch Double Eagle 80. And I, I feel happier about this saw. And uh, it is 350 was the bid, 380 got it to my door, again with no bar and chain. I bought it, several of those Archer bars in short order to throw on here. But this is an 82cc saw, and this was the next to last revision. The only revision past this one would have been the Pro Mac 8200, which uh, some people I think find more desirable because of something that was changed in the exhaust port. I don't, I don't know that all that well. Uh, a guy like Mark Hyman could certainly explain it and, and you know may have it make sense. But this has been used. It's not in terrible shape by any stretch, but it's been used. You can see all the paint worn off the throttle handle. That means it, it got used. But, you know, the, the Double Eagle 80 air filter cover decals are in pretty good shape. Other than that little bit of a crack on the air duct, that's intact. I mean, it sucks that the chain brake is broken up there. Someday, if I find a, a yellow chain brake housing that's in better shape at a price that it doesn't make me want to vomit, my I might replace that, obviously, but the muffler's complete, that proper style muffler, and the chain brake guts are there, and it does work. Clearly, I added a bucking spike, and that's an aftermarket kit, I can tell by the hardware. Whatever, no big deal. AV mounts were in good enough shape, I'd run it in a heartbeat. So, again, 82cc, say 500 into it, that's okay. I feel okay with that. All right, next, and we're still recording this time. That's a plus to me. All right, the next is a Homelite Super XL Blue model. Now, I've got a number of these in my collection, but I bought this one because I didn't have this variant from 1996 that just has the Homelite Super XL Super Simple label on both the starter and the drive case cover. I didn't have it. I've got the old blue, I've got the special edition, but I didn't have this one, so I wanted it. 315 bid price, 340 to my door, minus the bar and chain. Not bad. With how good this looks, it's not new old stock but it's all so very close, very, very close. Uh, I didn't even repaint the muffler. You can see a little bit of rust in there in the photo, but got the original fuel hose and everything. This hasn't seen much action. I know it has the original sprocket on it and it has next to no wear. So I bought a period correct home light bar in that white lettering to go with it. Uh, you can still see the inspection t sticker on the hand, uh, hand guard there next to nowhere on the bottom. This is a clean saw, and it is again a 1996 model. So I feel totally good, even with, you know, at 340 plus 60 for the bar and chain, we're gonna say 400 bucks for a nearly new saw, 58 cc, oh yeah, any day of the week. Especially being a home light idiot like I am. All right, next on the list, we're gonna bounce back to the yellow boys. And some of you might be kind of cocking your head right now going, dude, it's a 610, come on. 
It is, I know, I know. But again, a Pro Mac 5700, you know, that that is a variant you don't see every single day with this kind of labeling and the gray body parts. It's unique enough that I went, okay, I'll do that. I mean, McCulloch sold a bazillion of this style of saw, but how many they sold with this labeling, that I'm not clear on, because this is pretty late stuff, right? basically right before they went bye bye for good. So there's a little fade on the, the starter plastic, a little bit of damage to the, the labels, but not a lot. You can clearly read what in the world it is, which is pretty cool. Even on the, uh, the chain brake side, and the chain brake is complete, unbroken, it works. The McCulloch bar is period correct. Not a huge amount of wear on the bottom. There is some sap buildup, so somebody was cutting pine with this, and I didn't want to chisel it off the bottom. But, uh, yeah. Pro Mac 5700-20. Sticking with the theme. McCulloch Pro Mac 800. This is one of the most expensive saws that I have. Not the most, but it would probably be in the top, definitely top 20, probably top 10. 560 was the bid, 590 got it to my door. That hurts a little bit. Obviously I had a little extra money to blow when I did that, because then I put another one of them Archer bars on there, which I don't have a problem with. That was what was available, so that's what it got. Paint wear isn't excessive. You can see some on the starter there. The starter itself, uh, you can see some paint wear where the, the upper starter housing screw came in and out. Pretty common, it happens. But the Pro Mac 800 label on the air filter cover is in excellent shape. The color of the saw is really good. It doesn't, it wasn't sitting out in the sun very much, getting, uh, getting faded UV damage. Uh, you can see the plastic air ducts are in place and they're in pretty good shape. It's a shame, again, a few bars of the chain break are broken out, but what are you going to do, you know? That, I, I, I will probably live with that one. I'm probably not going to search for a replacement for that because the chain break is complete. It works. Clearly, I added an aftermarket bucking spike yet again. A little bit of paint loss in that oil filter or oil housing, you know. I could replace that, but again, the color all matches it character. I think I'll just leave it alone. And it even has the correct, you know, color of the oil manual oil and choke knobs and all that. So again, wasn't cheap, but it is one of the 82 cc variants that I, I wanted in the collection. So there it is. Next one on the list, a Home White Super XL 925 Western. So a lot of you guys know now what's on the other side. Really good paint. Uh, really good paint. And the purchase price on this, someone's going to crap. $235 shipped to my door. No joke. I scored big time on this. This is one of those ones that... You smile from ear to ear and do a happy dance. That was just the power head. I had to use one of my bars from my stock, but I don't care. 235 with a full wrap handle. Yes, please. Any day of the week. You bet. So that's what makes it a Western, is that full wrap handle. You can see the paint is in excellent shape. There's some scratches on the decal on that side, but it's not bad. Drive case cover looks really good. <laughs> Has the proper uh, right hand guard still in place. The paint all matches. The other part of the Western package is that kind of band of a shield over the muffler and the direction that it's blowing, kind of the back. That also helps keep the sawdust out of your face when you're you're bucking, you know, or doing a back cut way up here. Helps blow it away from your face. That's a, a feature that I am very much in favor of. Uh, even the white accents on the air filter cover are still in place. Uh, I may or may not have had to replace those rubber hand grips. I honestly don't remember. They look kind of new. I probably did, but whatever. Even with the bar chain and a few little things like that, I couldn't have been into this for more than about 350 So, you know, just a beautiful, beautiful saw. Again, very little UV damage. Not a lot of paint wear has its tag. F would be a, a 1984 model. 
So we're getting later in the run there, quite a bit later. So very happy with that one. Love it. Next one on the list is an old blue XL12. You know, it's amazing how you can start a collection and realize years later, holy crap, I don't have the most common damn saw ever in it. But that's what happened with this XL12. So this one was $229.50 on the bid, $251.50 shipped to my door. I don't remember if it came with a bar or chain or not. Doesn't really matter. The paint is in excellent shape for the 60s paint that like to come off in big old chunkers. Um, this variant, oh, I got a better picture of the serial tag I'll get to. Uh, again, the paint, paint's in good shape. Uh, has the proper, it's going to be an early one because it's got that T, uh, what was that, a TJ8J spark plug. You can see that really flat spark plug wire, so it's like half a spark plug under there. They're, they're really goofy looking. Stack muffler. This didn't get a lot of use. Look at all the paint on that drive case cover. Look how little is missing from the uh, the tank, the, the fuel tank. Hardly anything missing from the bottom. Yeah, this is going to be a, a 66, probably a 1966 model would be my guess. Look at that. So, real clean saw. Again, common as hell. But to find one that's this clean original, that that's a little... A little tougher, so I'm happy to have that. All right, next one on the list is a Home Light C91. There's only one other C series variant that I need, and that is a C71, and that's been elusive. This C91 is early enough that it still has the, uh, the six is it six reeds. I think it's six reeds. The later ones, they went back to a single read like the earlier ones used, and that was as they were releasing the XP series saws. And the, the urban legend, legend, for lack of a better word, is that that was because they uh, wanted the XP saws to perform better than what they were replacing. Could be true. I mean, I could see someone doing that. This one has some pretty significant paint wear, but it has its tag. Uh, you can see somebody put studs in for the starter. I, I don't know what happened there, but I didn't want to mess with it. I decided this was going to be a patina saw that I would leave alone and just let it exist as it was when I got it. So, you know, it's not the best looker, but enough is there that you know exactly what it is. It does have a complete proper muffler, right color drive case. I mean, I added a new, new chain to it. I don't know about the bar if that came with the saw. I really don't remember. No. That didn't. I put that roller nose. That's something I picked up. So there was some extra expense in the bar and chain, but 127 was the bid and 163.09 got it to my door. So even though there's a lot of paint missing and this would be a good candidate for a full restoration, at this time that's not what I'm intending to do. I'm going to just leave it as a patina saw and it's the C91 in my collection. And at that price, super happy to have it. All right, next up is another uh, another international variant, the Super XL AM, which stands for Automatic and Manual Oilers. So this, again, would be a 66, maybe 67, 1967 variant. Would have been sold international, primarily Canada. You can tell some differences by the uh, metallic paint that's on the uh, front handle there. You can see a little bit of the the, the badging that's left, that kind of, you know, rectangle with a triangle on it. Uh, unfortunately, the serial tank is missing from this one, but there were enough pieces there that made it very clear what it is that I was okay with that. I've got the proper can muffler on there that somebody had drilled some extra holes in, and I don't remember what the hell was there. I don't know if there was a strip stud that I ended up fixing, I don't remember, but whatever. From this side, you can see the Super XL AM logo. Pretty cool, just a variant. Tank is worn to beat hell. I'm pretty sure I added the bucking spike and this thing definitely had fuel spilled all over it all the time and it was drugged through the brush a lot. 
missing a lot of paint, but there's enough of it there that I'm going to keep it original as a Super XL AM. That one, $80 was the bid, 108 to my door. I have a feeling it came from that seller in Vermont that's had quite a few of these. Whatever, this one worked for me. I was very, very happy with it. All right, next one on the list is another international variant. And this was sold, this is a Duramark 16, and this would have been sold by uh, one of the department stores. Was the Hudson, Hudson Bay Company, I think? I think? I'm screwing that up, maybe. It was a Canadian department store, similar to what we had here, Sears, JCPenney. They bought these and had them painted, you know, black, and the Duramark logo put on there, but they're a home light. This is a home light XL1 automatic or super easy automatic, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is. It's really cool. I really like this. Uh, I want to collect the other variants of this, including the Super XL version that was painted all black like this. That one has eluded me for a long time. And saw one on Craigslist not long ago, but the seller wasn't willing to, to deal with shipping. And if you, if Someone out there, if you have one, and you're like, oh, I don't want to mess with shipping, I'll make it worth your while. For that saw, I will make it worth your while. Get a hold of me. If you have the Super XL version with good markings and stuff in black, get a hold of me, please. I'd love to have that saw. Uh, yeah, I don't think I repainted anything on this. I think this is as it came, uh, other than I, I'm sure I did the rubber hand grips on the throttle handle. Those look, those look new, and they're common to be screwed up. Chain brake is complete, and it works. I'm sure I added the bar and chain. Uh, I didn't put a bucking spike on it. That's interesting. I'll have to do that one of these days. Not a lot of wear in the tank paint. So this one was 109.38 on the bid and 137.38 to my door. So I walked away from that one like a bandit. I don't know how that happened. I don't. Because uh, I know these are sought after by hardcore collectors like myself. So super, super happy to have that one. All right, next one is another international version. And it's a 350P, 350 Pro, all right? And you know, at first glance, you're like, dude, it's a 350. Ah, but there's a little thing different on this. There's a few things that are different. Uh, some of the under hood differences you won't see because it's under the carburetor. It's a slightly different uh, method of uh, gasketing under there. I think this one also has a top-down air filter as opposed to the bottom up the 350 and 360 use so that is a difference but in the views you're looking at now you can see oh that has a handle on it that isn't standard that's a three-quarter wrap handle so yeah pretty cool very cool has a unique muffler as well that is an international Canadian style uh, muffler only. It's missing its serial tag and that, again, it bothers me, but it is what it is. I wasn't gonna pass this off. You don't see very many of these. You just don't, especially that have a three quarter wrap handle like that. That's pretty cool, actually. Pretty damn cool. And I've seen enough of these. I know the rubber's a little damaged on that, that a guy might look at that and go, ah, someone made that. Nah, I've seen enough of these. I've seen three now, including the one I have, and they all look the same, so they're legit. And you can also take a look in the IPL and see that they're legit. So, pretty cool. There's some wear on the drive case cover. I wish that still showed the 350 Pro, but hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I probably put the bar and chain on it. It looks like I did. Not a lot of wear on the tank. Pretty clean. So this one was $199 on the bid and $259.16 to my door. So I'm pretty certain I bought it from a Canadian seller on eBay. That's about the right shipping price for, for 2021. So yeah, really cool, nice variant. Love that I have it. Next one on the list, another variant I'm really happy to have. This one was made here in the States. 
Now it's a home light 410. And from the first view, you might be going, oh, this looks like a regular old 410. But then when you go to the next view, it's kind of like, well, what, what's hiding over there? I mean, it's clean, doesn't have a lot of paint loss. But then you go to the next view and you go, okay. How many 410s do you see with a full wrap handle? You see the, if you read the IPL, see the options in there. They don't show a picture of it. And this is only the third saw that I've seen like that. Uh, and so when it came up on eBay, I bought it. This is in the top five most expensive. $799.99 to my door. 800 bucks. That was a buy it now, and I didn't even flinch. Thankfully, I had the money rat holed away to do it. Because, holy crap, you just don't see these. Now, this has got an eye on there. This is a 1987 model. So this would not have, there weren't many made after this. Uh, yeah, just beautiful. That full wrap is in beautiful shape. Of course, the, the drive case cover is protected, so it's in beautiful shape. I added that bar and chain. That was probably another 120 bucks. This is damn near a thousand dollar saw. So saying that, I just cringe and go, God, what kind of an idiot am I? Why didn't I pick a cheaper hobby? But the worst wear on the whole saw is right at the front. That's true of every 410. That muffler design cooks the paint. It gets brittle and then it chips off. That's just the way it is. But this saw is in really, really good shape. It really is. And with that full wrap handle, it was one I just could not pass up. So, yeah. Like I say, that's easily in the top five of the most expensive saws I've got. All right, we're getting close here, folks. We have one more saw from 2021, and it is one that I bought explicitly for a challenge that I haven't done. We have the Poulin, Poland. Let me pronounce it right, because I've actually seen the proper pronunciation. It's Poland, not Poulon, not Poulin, Poland. In one of their ads, in the Chainsaw Age magazine, they actually had an ad that said, hey guys, you're not pronouncing it right. Here's what you do. Pretty funny. Poland. Counter Vibe 3400. This is basically an XL12. It's a Mac 1010, 54cc saw. Bought it for one of those cutoffs that hasn't been done yet. One of those challenges. Uh, not a lot to say about it. I don't think I did much. I think it ran pretty close to out of the box. You know, paint's in pretty good shape. Decals are in pretty good shape. I probably added a bar and chain, and if I didn't add the the bar, I definitely put a new chain on it because I can see that there. Pretty clean, you know. It's there's a lot of these counter vibes around. 3400 is not hard to come by, but I bought it explicitly for one of those challenges that hasn't been done yet, but it will be done. Fifty-six dollars bid price, one nineteen eighty-eight to my door. That's why I think the bar came with it because of the shipping cost there. All right. That's it. That's all I have data on. And that only covers... Well, that was another 12 saws. So that's 22... 25 saws in three years that I put in the collection. For grins... Let me see if I can get a, an accurate count here real quick. I haven't done this for a while. What I actually have, this will be scary. I gotta make sure I don't put too much stuff in here. Can that be right? <laughs> if I don't have, okay, even assuming I, I have a couple extra folders in here, I just highlighted them to get the count, and it's showing that I have 185 folders selected here. So that's 185 roughly. At least 180 saws that I've got in my collection now. Wow, when I say that I need help. You guys should commit me. So yeah, most of those were, I mean, the vast majority were purchased before 2021 because that's what I've got the last data on. But that's part of why my purchases have slowed down. I've got a lot of saws. A lot of those models that pop up now I don't need. So I'm still actively looking at a few of the 82cc saws from McCulloch. Uh, 
damn few from Pioneer. There's still a few variants. There, there are definitely variants out there that I don't have, but yeah. So anyway, I hope that's of some value, sharing the values. Hmm. Interesting phrasing. To the original comment that was on uh, YouTube, that should help. And you can see that the saw values have gone up overall. You especially look at what's going on on eBay right now. There's a guy that's been trying to sell a 750 for about 1200 bucks. I think that's been on there for close to a month. Hasn't sold. Um, with the bar that's on it, I mean, he's not too far out of line with where I have been seeing things. I watched a Super Pro uh, 125 sell for, I want to say, 1300 almost 1400 bucks the uh, Sunday night. I want one, but I don't want one that bad. Uh, yeah, and a 3100G is probably still a two or three thousand dollar saw in the right condition. And I want one of those, but I don't want it that bad. So yeah, values are going up, but yeah, this will be a tool. You know, five years from now, it'll be interesting. If somebody's watching this, going, "Oh my God," you know, an XL12 for. You know, 250 bucks, they're 500 bucks now. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but that's the kind of stuff that could happen. So, and kind of goofy, kind of different video. Hope you guys got a little enjoyment out of it. A little bit of information that's worthwhile. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.